Good morning, guys. Today we're gonna try making that Fantina style cheese again and always trying to alter flavors where we can get the best cheesy flavors possible. But Fantina is a very mild, it has a nice cheese flavor, but it's not a not a very strong, I don't find it's a very strong cheese. It's kind of mild, mild tasting, I guess. So here we go. We're gonna start off with that one potato. Okay, we've got this one potato that we're going to put into our neutral bullet. I should maybe use my larger blender, but I'm too lazy to go get it. So this is what I'm going to use. And we're going to put to this one and a half cups of milk. I'm going to use soy this time around. There we go. We're going to use one and a half cups of soy and remember it's always trying to get the best flavors we can get out of a cheese so we've got one i might have to probably pull out that blender here we go one and a half okay um if my container is too small, I say use a blender. If you see, uh, if I see my container is too small, I might split it up and then blend half at a time and then cook my cheese. So don't mind me. I like doing things the hard way. But as long as it gets done, it doesn't matter how I do it. But yes, I would say go ahead and get yourself a blender to do your cheese. Okay, let me just drain that out. Here we go. So we've got one. I'm going to use three this time. Always try to improve my cheese, guys. So that's three tablespoons of potato starch. One third. Right, one third cup of the tapioca starch. And we're going to put just a little more. And that was heating. So we're going to put one third plus one, one, two tablespoons of tapioca starch. We're going to put some salt to this. Now you want this cheese to have salt tasting. Uh, last time I put a half, um, a half tablespoon, but I am going to put a little more this time. You want it to have some cheesy Sorry, you want it to have some salty taste to it. So I've got one tablespoon of salt this time around. Here we go. Like I said, always trying to get it to the best texture and taste I can possibly get it. But again, this is your cheese. If you like it more mild, leave it more mild. Here we go. We've got a half clove of garlic. Uh, we're going to do rejuvelac. Now, my rejuvelac is a very old rejuvelac. But if you don't have it, I say leave it out. Maybe put some nutritional yeast to get that cheesy taste. But mine is very stinky. It stinks like cheese. So what I'm going to do is going to put my rejuvelac in this recipe. Here we go. Mine is really nice and gnarly, so I am going to put two, and remember this is not for probiotic, it's more for flavor, so I'm going to put two, yeah, nice and cheesy. We're going to put just a little bit of maple, and that just helps make that cheese just a little, a little sweet, and now... I'm not sure if you've noticed, but miso has a cheesy taste to me. So, I put two tablespoons of miso. So, we're going to go one. I'm going to do one more, guys. So we're going to make it three 
tablespoon this time around and see how I like it. I really do believe it has a nice cheesy taste. I'm going to mix this up first and see what it tastes like. And then I'll add my other ingredients. So remember guys, this might overflow on you. So I say do the, um, do the blender rather than the Nutribullet because it really is a lot more cheese than it can handle. So I'm just going to mix it and taste it. This is all about tasting your cheese right now. Mmm, good. I'm not putting the onion this time around, guys. If you don't have any lemon, you can use uh, vinegar. I would say use the white vinegar rather than any kind of vinegar like a balsamic. You want a nice white vinegar. Or, like I said, use just the lemon juice. That should work. Okay, so I am going to have my burner on ready for me. I have it on low for now. I am going to add to this agar. Three teaspoons, which is one tablespoon. I'm going to go for more because I want this to be a little more firm. So we're going to go one, one and a half tablespoons of agar. And to this, we're going to add also our coconut oil. We've got one third. Yeah, we're going to leave it at one third cup of coconut oil. So we're going to blend this all up. And remember guys, the coconut oil is the plain non-flavored coconut oil. Someone says, oh, it tastes like coconut. Well, don't put the cold press. You want to use something that's not flavored, so you're going to use a refined. go so here we go we mix that up now to this we're gonna do either the lemon uh, either the lemon juice or we're gonna do the uh, the vinegar so we're gonna do lemon juice for this one okay and we're gonna squeeze the juice of half there we go. The juice of half a lemon. And we're just going to put it through my Nutribullet, my Nutribullet one more time. You don't have to. You could do it right in the pot. There we go. Delicious. So we're going to pour this in and we're going to cook this down until it gets thicker. And then we're going to put it to cool off. Now, like I said, this cheese is not a cheese that I'm aiming for melting. I'm just making a cheese that I can put on the table when people come over. Or I could put in sandwiches, guys. Here we go. Onto the burner it goes. So I have it on a medium to lowish heat. You don't want this too high because then you're going to burn the bottom. And we're just going to cook this down a bit. And help that agar cook and this way that cheese will get nice and firm for us so I'm gonna keep cooking this and then I'm gonna show you how thick it should be for you now remember this time around we left the onion and really it's up to you if you want it um, if you want to add some onion add some onion uh, if you want to add some mushroom powder you can do that uh, you can also add herbs if you're interested. It really is up to you, but I would do that more at the end. The herbs. The mushroom powder, I would say if you're going to add that, 
add it ahead of time. Okay, so I did add the juice of the other half a lemon. So there's the juice of one full lemon that went into this recipe. And I'm just going to cook it a little longer. I just want to show you so far what it looks like. Not sure, can you see? Can you see how thick that's getting? want to show you what it looks like That's. okay now here we go I just want to show you something if you want to do the probiotic thing wait till it cools off a few seconds here yeah, we're gonna wait till it cools off just a few minutes and then you could actually, if you want, put a capsule of the probiotic right into. But it might still be too hot for that. So really. Okay, so this is pretty good. I am now going to put it into my container. And we're going to have to put this to, where's my spatula? There we go. I'll put this aside. Uh, we're going to put this in my container and we're going to put this to get refrigerated. You will put it in the fridge without covering it. You don't want to cover it because it's going to make steam on you. And if you get a nice, um, a nice shape container for your cheese, it's even better. I'm going to look into one, and if I find something I like, I'm going to let you guys know. It's just also nice to have a nice presentation when it comes to cheese. Especially if you're going to put it on a table when you have people coming over. Okay. Here we go. Just gonna put just a little bit of parchment right on top so it doesn't nothing falls on my cheese when it goes in the fridge you don't want anything to fall on top of your cheese so now this is gonna go into the fridge and you're gonna let it cool off completely so you can let it stay a whole day maybe by tonight you can actually put the lid back on this tonight we might be able to put some paper towels at the bottom flip our cheese back in the fridge the trick is to get as much moisture out of this cheese as possible if you don't you're going to end up having like almost a creamy type cheese so we're going to put this in the fridge and then i'm going to show you what to do so i'll see you in a bit guys okay guys quick quick uh it's been now a couple of hours that it's been in the refrigerator it's still very soft as you could tell but I'm going to see if I'm going to be able to pop it. Maybe not, eh? Oh yeah, I might be able to. So I am going to start pulling moisture out of this cheese. So you're going to need some good tissue paper. Not tissue paper, some good... Uh, paper towels. 
and you want to slowly drop it there you go so the longer you wait the better it is and if it doesn't detach as easy as you want to just slowly guide it and help it through there we go because you want to start pulling out as much as you can here we go still very soft as you could tell so we're going to put some paper at the bottom yeah maybe we'll do it this way We're going to put some paper at the bottom. And put our cheese back on. There we go. Hopefully I didn't break it. the lid okay um, so somebody asked me where do I get my brown paper you could get this at any we get it what you call staples or um, bureau and group we call it bureau and group where you could get uh, school supplies office supplies so you could get this paper it's basically packing paper so you could get this paper there you could even get it at the dollar store sometimes if you have a dollar tree or a dollar store near your home you could get this paper or if you ever get any parcels that come to your house you could always save this paper if it's nice and clean you could save it and then use it for cheeses so I have a new sheet that I'm using now I just want to show you I'm going to cut into this cheese I normally would not have cut into it but I just want to show you it's still too fresh to eat this cheese because you want to be able to absorb see how it's still too flexible you want it to absorb all the water to get that texture that I showed you on my last video okay so I'm going to show you now I'm just going to cut this in half uh, that it's still way too wet I mean you can eat it but this is not the texture that you want it's almost like a cream cheese at this point I just want to show you there we go I just want to show you the inside if you scrape it it's like cream cheese so that is not what you want you have to let this age and absorb all the water where when you cut it you're gonna get that perfect slice so I just wanted to show you this is just one day and it hasn't really uh, basically it made some rind because I left it completely exposed so it could dry up speed up the drying process but now paper paper if you want you could even add more of this paper and uh, just keep flipping this cheese not every day not every day but you do want to check this cheese out Maybe I have too much paper, but that's okay. It's still good. There we go. So now it goes into the fridge. And I am going to check this cheese out uh, in a few days just to see the progress. Like I said, inside is still way too creamy right now. If you cut it, it might even help speed it up. So maybe that is a good idea. If you cut it in half, it might help speed up the process in drying. But what you want to do is just every day maybe change how it's sitting. If it's sitting this way in the fridge, come maybe in a couple of days you want to sit in this way, standing up on the side. But you do want to rotate this cheese and check. If you see um, in a few days you can unwrap it, maybe change the the tissue now I don't throw away that tissue what I do is I throw it in the sink I give it a fast rinse and I can still use it to 
wipe whatever counter or so I don't waste the paper. Um, but yes, you do want to check it in a few days. Just check it and see, do I have to change the paper, then change the, tissue, uh, the paper towels inside. Keep the same brown paper on the outside. This is going to last you a long time. And if I'm making new cheese and my paper is still good, I use the same paper to wrap a new cheese. So it goes a long way. You really don't need that much of it. So here it is. This is my second day on this cheese. And now I'm going to keep it in there for a week before I even bother looking at it. I say change your paper if you're new at making this. Um, I kind of put it in there and forget about it. That's how I do it. And you're going to see it's going to start making a nice rind. And this cheese is going to be a beautiful slice sliceable cheese a nice nice sliceable cheese where you can make a little cubes it's a semi semi soft semi hard cheese so that's what we're aiming and if you want it even firmer that's really up to you but a cheese like this basically it's going to be like a, a fontina cheese where the outside is got that skin and the inside is still soft and pliable so that's the type of cheese we're making here so it's going in the fridge and I'm going to maybe make another update to show you what it looks like in maybe week two. So I could write a date on this just so I know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this July 10th. And like I said, I usually make it and forget it. But if you're worried and you want to check your cheese, uh, I say check it in a week. And if you're really worried, then check it in a few days if you have to. But... I know that this cheese is going to age perfect. So I'm going to write down July 10th and, and I'm going to tape it right there and put this cheese away until I'm ready to uh, give it a go and look at it. So that's another way you can do it. So this way if you start, if you like this type of cheese and you say, you know what, it's almost finished, it's time to uh, maybe start a new batch and you're starting it in a week, at least you know which one is the oldest one and which one is the newest one if you just tag it for yourself. Or just it gives you a reminder that you should go check your cheese. But like I said, right now it's very soft, guys. You see that? Now, if you want a firmer cheese, I say don't use agar, use kappa carrageenan. It is a complete ball game. See how soft that is right now? So, not ready. I mean, you can take it and spread it on bread, bread if you like it that way, sure. But there you go. Very simple. I'm going to make another little update just to show you what it looks like in a week or two. And you'll have an idea. But this is the fun part about making stuff like this is where you experience yourself, right? And um, yeah, if you find it still too wet, just leave it a little longer. Don't eat it. And your cheese is going to be just fine. So there we go. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.